You wake to chaos. A confusion of light and heat and smoke. Fire! Okay, that's probably not the best way to start off our adventure here in space. Your head is pounding. You must have hit it and blacked out, but you aren't sure how you got here. Or what Vertuma, Vertumnia is happening. On Vertumnia! Oh my gosh, is that like the place we're at? There's something important you need to remember. Your stomach lurches as the floor crumbles beneath your feet, then collapses. There's another person! Heck! Save me? Maybe? Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe we know this person. Your body aches and your eyes burn from the smoke. A figure appears through the flames. It's your friend. Your friend? Wait, why can't you remember her name? She's gesturing and shouting at you, but all you hear is ringing in your ears. Okay, like, since everything is tumbling around us right now, I think we should go ahead and just climb out instead of, you know, try to get explanations. You try to stand up, but one of your legs folds uselessly underneath you. It won't hold your weight. Your friend pulls you out of the rubble. She throws your arm over her shoulder and half drags you towards the door. <gasps> Whoa, look how pretty it is out there. Through it, you see a deep, eerie twilight, dark blue and cold against the heat of the fire all around you. Glow season. Oh, wow. Is the planet we're on actually one that experiences different seasons that aren't like the ones we're used to on Earth? Glow season? <gasps> Glowing eyes. You shake your head to clear your vision. Is that some kind of dog? Like from Earth? Okay. Maybe I don't want it blocking the only entrance, though. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. The creature howls and lunges, its jaws open. What the heck just happened? Well, hello, everyone. And welcome to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist, where we are actually going to be stepping out into space and carrying on a series of adventures where all of the choices that we make will matter in determining not only our own fate, but the fate of our friends and family all around us. There are over I think something like 500 different story events that you can bump into depending on what you decide to do with your life. It's very much like the grown-up game that we played, all grown up, and the fact that the choices we make on how we want to grow up and how we want to live as a young teenager will actually have a permanent effect on what the outcome of our adult life and the lives of the people around us, the lives of everyone in the entire colony are going to be like. So here we go. You were born on the stra- uh, let's see, the stratospheric. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. The stratospheric, Earth's first colony ship halfway through its 20-year voyage to a wormhole at the edge of the soul system. Your parents run the hydraulic gardens, which make- Oh, that's so cool! Oh, look at my mom! She looks awesome! Your parents run the hydro uh, hydrophonic gardens, which makes fresh air and vegetables for the ship. Like the other colonists, they bravely choose to make this one-way journey to the uncharted planet Vert- un uh, Let's see, Vert- um, na, Vertumna 4? Wow! I wonder where all the other Vertumas are, like, in the same system? In the hopes that they could escape Earth's troubles. They had you the old-fashioned way, merging their genes like they merge their cultures and traditions. They name you... Oh, look at all of these cool names! Okay, Solana, Sol Solacia, Solane. Okay, can, can I kind of, like, follow in on that with, like, Solsiri? <laughs> Solsiria? How about we go with Solsiria? I like that. That's our space name. Heck, is this us? You're a bright-eyed child with an active imagination. Sometimes too active, your mom says. Okay, alright, so this is going to be the late teen appearance, and we can change these at any time. I'm gonna go in the she-her category. And then we'll go with more of a feminine appearance for now. Just see, that's something you can change. So you can also just settle into the middle of the them, he, him. And then you can also have kind of more an androgynous appearance or a masculine appearance. We're going to be, and I like how there's like a slider. So you can kind of be on a scale of that instead of just an option. That's so cool. It's not something I've ever seen anywhere else. 
This is us, huh? Oh, wow. Oh, look at us. You have vivid dreams of things you've never experienced. Dirt under your feet, skies overhead, endless jungles and strange animals. You wonder if this is what Vertumna will be like. Oh, that's so cool. So we have like empathy, persuasion, creativity, bravery. Uh, it looks like those are like our social skills. Then we have like mind skills, reasoning, organizing, engineering, biology. And then we have physical skills, toughness, perception, combat, and animals. Oh, I'm all over that one. I am so all over that one. Do any of these like react right now? Oh, here we go. Toughness maybe? Oh, wow. So familiarity with xenofauna, hunting, and ranching. <gasps> and then biology, study of plants, biochemistry, and the human body. And then I love creativity, artistic ability, and capacity for novel ideas. Bravery for both social and dangerous situations. And we already have a little bit of empathy from understanding other people. This is so cool. And perception is the ability to find things and sneak past things. Okay, that sounds amazing. And then, okay, I want to see what else this is. What's this? Kudos, oh my gosh, a reputation-based currency? I have to stare into the distance and wonder about like how close actual Earth right now is on the trajectory for that. <laughs> and then it looks like we have, oh, stress level. Interesting, physical and mental exhaustion and rebellion, relationship with the adults and colony government. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cute. So those are our character traits. Oh look, these are our memories. So all of our memories end up becoming cards that we can use when we are trying to face the decisions and the choices and the challenges that we need to make throughout our life. And so the different things we experience, the different memories we create will end up becoming these adorable, oh my gosh. Yeah, we'll end up becoming these absolutely adorable like images and these are going to be the cards that we can use for those challenges do we have any gear you'll keep adding to your deck as you age and can forget cards by spending time relaxing you have a limited number of gear slots based on your organization and other skills click gear to equip and unequip it collectibles that you find while exploring may be given as gifts to friends or used during challenges for one-time bonuses okay that's so cool oh my gosh and you have you can have pets Oh, good gravy. Okay, and then we need to find like collectibles. All of that is exceptionally exciting to me. Um, so those were our memories. Do we have, oh, the month of quiet. <gasps> I love the like thematic tone to all of the different months in the sense of time that passes. And this tells us a little bit about Solceria. You are 10 years old and an average kid. You have an innate understanding of others and you're even better at winning arguments. And then my pronouns are she, her. And then I think these are gonna be like the traits or no, these are gonna be our friends as we start really working with them. And yeah, these are our character traits. Okay, I think we're good. Every child on the stratospheric is given one genetic enhancement. By age six, you'll see the first sign of yours. Pardon me? So I get like a free gene boost? That's so cool. We could have eagle eyes, extra finger fingers, absorbent brain, super strength, calm temperament, or nothing at all. I think I'm going to go ahead and pick... Oh man, I'm, I'm tempted to pick calm temperament because I think that that would be like really nice because if you're on a, a colony ship, you probably know more or less everybody your entire life. Uh, absorbent brain would help us learn a lot more. Extra fingers probably would be good for like dexterity. Uh, same with super strength, good for like toughness. I think we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do eagle eyes because I think we'd be so excited to get off of the colony ship and step onto the new planet for the very first time. We would absolutely wanna look at everything. Curiosity is going to be a big drive for, for Solceria. I can just tell. There we go. Oh my gosh, this is cool. Okay, so gained memory, eagle eyes, and we got t plus 10 to perception. Your eyes have both eagle and owl DNA. So you have superhuman long distance and night vision. Yes, that's so cool. Not only can you see all the way to the hol holo projector from the back of the classroom, but you can read Professor Hell's private holo palm notes. Sometimes they say confidential, which is exciting, but you don't understand most of the big words. Okay, that's really cool. Oh, look, it's the other kids. See, I knew we'd be able to like know everybody else in our group. That's so neat. 
The other kids think you're a little weird, except energetic and loyal an enemy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so I think this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then uh, studious and mature tangent. What cool names are this? Quiet and adventure, adventurous, DYS, bold and confident Mars, tough and gentle Cal, energetic and loyal and enemy, um, studious and mature tangent. Oh, and there's actually another one, shy and sweet Tammy. Let's go with quiet and adventurous D's, dies because I, I feel like we could get into all sorts of cool, curious, like, adventures with them. Oh, cool! Oh, maybe we'll go ahead and we'll, like, read through everybody real quick, because I want to know a bit more about them. And we know dies a secret? Oh, that's so cool! Uh, plus two if the, if in the first or last pane. Oh, that, that's gonna be so interesting to see the challenge, like, schematics and how those work here. Unlike his studious twin sister, Tangent, Dias sits at the back of the classroom and doodles on his holopad. You bond while cracking jokes about the weird diagrams in your textbooks. His quiet nature and his morbid curiosity make him somewhat of a loner, but at least he has a friend in you. Okay, I'm gonna look through everybody just really quick. Energetic and loyal anemone. Oh, look at that. So this would be all strength cards become two under two. Interesting. An enemy is the most enthusiastic person you know. Your favorite memory is the time she th she taught you how to play zero G sports ball after class. She never means to get you into trouble, uh, but somehow you two always seem to find it together. Okay, that's also adorable. Okay, yeah, yeah we saw an enemy. What about Cal? Cal is a sweetheart and always ready to lend a hand or play a game. He and Tammy are just as inseparable, so it's almost like you have two best friends instead of one. Cal teaches you how to take care of all the classroom plants. Your parents are b very proud of you. So he gets into the plants? Oh, this is going to be so hard to like decide. Bold and confident Mars. Mars is a natural leader. Whenever you're all playing together, Mars is the one who comes up with all the ideas. She can be a little bossy, but that's part of her charm. She always organizes fun stuff for the kids after class. You're both founding members of the Secret Fun Time Club. Okay, and she gives you negative one kudos, negative one kudos at the end of the round if this card was played, even if you lose. Huh. I mean, wouldn't you want to have kudos? That's interesting. Uh, and then studious and mature Tangent. Oh, so this is the other twin. Tangent sits right up fun front by the hollow protector and always has her hand in the air. She and her twin brother dies drifted apart when she started <laughs> genome treatment to make her body conform to her gender. Today, Tang is the girl you always knew she was, but her relationship with Dai's is worse than ever. Okay, so then Tangent and Dai's might have been, like, assigned, like, male at birth, but then she had got to start, like, genome treatment early on. Oh, man, she's, like, the really smart one. And then shy and sweet Tammy. Oh, Tammy! She looks so cute. I just want to protect her forever, you guys. Look at all those cute little gems that she has in the back of her hair. Tammy is the kindest person you know. She idolizes Antecedent and is always following her around, helping her with the babies or learning how to cook. She has the best snacks at class recess and always shares, especially with you and Cal. She and Cal are just as close, so it's like having two best friends. Ugh... Uh, who do I pick? Everybody is so cute. This is why you, the replayability on these kinds of things, uh, these, these specific <clears throat> games, cough, cough, adventures, uh, actually let you like replay and make different life choices. And I'm so excited to see where we go here. Oh, guys, Tammy has just won me over. She just looks so cute. And she has like, she's helping to take care of things and take care of everybody. And I have a soft spot for wanting to take care of the people who take care of others. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go with Tammy. But I promise one day, quiet and adventurous dies. Plus two. Oh, man, and he has a secret too. Oh, man. Like, oh, morbid curiosity. The thing is, if he has morbid curiosity, Ah, I mean, we get into really cool things, but I feel like this time around, I just want to be like happy and playful and adventurous. So let's see, have I leveled up Tammy? Whoa, has visiting with Tammy already got her up to like one heart? Really? What about dies? Ooh, okay. Is everybody at one heart? 
I think, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so everybody would be at one heart depending on how we pick them. I'm gonna go ahead, I have to pick Tammy. And it's kind of a fun bonus that she comes along with Cal who likes the plants. I'm just gonna follow my my organic, authentic personality this time, but I promise you, we're gonna be making very different decisions in the future. Hey, Tammy. Oh, okay, so plus 10 stress. You're 10 years old when the ship finally reaches the wormhole. Professor Hal says it's like a doorway to the other star systems. With the planets Vertun Vertumna 4 on the, the planet Vertumna 4 on the other side. You run emergency drills for months to prepare. Oh my gosh. Okay, so then these would be... So are these now... How do I... Oh, 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 oh. So you, you can rename yourself at any time, it seems. How do I close this? What if I... I guess we have to, like... Okay, Tammy's care. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so this is how we're all set up. Uh, what? Oh yeah, there was also a thing trying to eat us at the beginning. And now that I just remembered that, not so sure how I feel about that, to be honest. Also, look at this classroom. <gasps> when I used to teach my kids, like my kids being the... Um, third through sixth graders who would come to the nonprofit where I taught about cave ecology and, and different ecosystems, I would have given anything for a classroom like this. Because this, this is alive. This is where curiosity absolutely comes to be nurtured and, and, and flourish and grow and be born. It's much better than the very bland cell-like boring rooms I remember having myself. When the day finally comes, it starts with the rumble. Then things start to slide off tables. You hurry to gather. Uh, you hurry to gather near the escape pods, just in case. Oh, hey, it's my parents. Okay, guys, you're not gonna like leave me orphaned right out of the gate, are you? The emergency area is crowded with families. It's going to be fine, Solceria. Your dad soothes. We'll be through the wormhole and down on the planet before you know it, just like we've practiced. Your mom gives him a sharp, worried look. Uh oh. Red emergency lights switch on as a siren begins to sound somewhere in the distant, in the somewhere distant in the ship. You try to breathe slowly, like you were taught, but you're very scared. You look out a porthole. The stars are gone. When you're frightened, you think of a game to play, get in touch with your emotions, or put on a tough face. Face. Um. Oh man, I think I'm gonna like think of a game to play because. Sometimes ruminating in my emotions can make me a little bit too nervous. And if I can feel like I'm actually contributing to an emergency, that's when I'm the calm, like the calmest. You start a, ga you start a game of Rambutan with some of your classmates. You pick the topic, types of fruit. Cal thinks about it. I could name 10 kinds of fruit, he says. Oh, this is cute. So now we have a distraction game. Mm, maybe I could ma name 11, dies mumbles. An enemy confidently counters with 12. Back to Cal. He thinks again. I could name 20. The others shrug, and an enemy tells him to go ahead. Apple, orange, banana, Cal starts. And tomatoes are a fruit, and cucumbers and corn. The game immediately erupts into an argument of somatics, as many games of Rambutan do. You wait. The shaking builds. Oh man, look, our stress is going up. Then everything starts to get very weird. The hallway stretches, stretches, and you're stretching too. Your arms impossibly long. Your head feels like it's slowly filling up like a balloon and contracting down to the size of an atom at the same time. Is this the wormhole? You hear the distant ominous squeal of metal giving way as the ship shudders and lurches in slow motion. The weirdest part is a sense of deja vu. You're sure that this has happened to you before. And you know, somehow, that everything's going to be okay. The shuddering reaches a crescendo. You hear an impossibly loud crunch and feel weightless for a few seconds before gravity slams your back against the wall head first. You black out. As you slip unconscious, you feel yourself twisted out of time. It's today, yesterday, and tomorrow all at once. And more than just one tomorrow, lots of them different tomorrows you find oh it's mars all grown up what the heck this is so cool i was not 
considering that we're going to have like some sort of almost Outer Wilds-esque temporal time distortions as well. I'm very happy about this. You find yourself in a place that you know from your dreams. Tilled fields, dramatic ridges, and a stranger. But also not a stranger, grinning as she grabs your hand. Hurry up, she says. I'm not going to let you miss this. Distantly, you can feel the ship shaking has stopped and hear your parents' worried voices. Feeling safe, you slip further into the warm embrace of the stars. You drift. Why didn't we put on seatbelts before all this? <laughs> oh, hey! This is the med bay? People heal so much better. It's scientifically proven people heal better when they are surrounded by plants and they can see nature, like to the point where that's becoming a really essential thing in the construction of hospitals. So I'm a thousand percent happy about this. This is what a med bay should look like. Like, hurrah, hurrah to rewriting the sci fi genre here. Gradually, your consciousness reforms. You wake up in the med bay. The med bed under you plays a soft tone and an automated voice speaks. Two weeks have elapsed. The, par the patient's cranial injury has completed healing. They may now be safely discharged. As the fog lifts from your head, you realize something seems different around the about this room. It's so bright. You try to focus on the window. Something is definitely different. Okay, sunlight, trees, or ground? Honestly, I think the trees would be amazing, but I think I would be stunned by the fact that there's like ground Because there's lots of plants in our ship, so I I'm gonna be surprised by the ground Instead of the familiar blackness of space bright light from twin blue and yellow suns is streaming through the windows You peer out and see fields glass walled domes and ring and walls ringed by giant mushroom like trees Wow already we have fields and domes up there are construction materials everywhere and people walking around outside on the ground you better get out there and join them all right we're gonna rush out and start our new life are you kidding of course i mean the med babe like chair told me it was okay what the heck hey oh this is so cute oh tammy jumps up as you step out of the ship's quarters behind her you're awake are you all better? You better go see your dad. She points southeast towards some of some geodisc domes. Okay. Okay. So, all right, all right. So we can we can walk and talk. She's so cute. She's my little friend, Tammy. Tammy. Oh, look at our ship. I I wonder. Was it supposed to? I don't think it was supposed to land like that, guys. And look at all the cool flags. What a way to celebrate so many different different people coming from earth to start like a new a new united like adventure without having to like give up their past i love this tammy looks concerned you slept for so long after you bumped your head she says i bet your parents were worried your dad is working over in geophonics near those domes they're called greenhouses i would go with you but um well this is as far as i've been from the ship since we landed tammy stutters blushing it's scary outside. Oh, Tammy. Don't worry, we'll make it all okay. <gasps> Whoa, hey. Hey, Dad, one second. I gotta look at all this stuff. What's this? Where am I? What's this thing? Command. Command is a warren of long hallways with doors off to tiny, nondescript offices. Everyone you pass seems to be hurrying off to something important. The end of one hallway opens into the supply depot, depot which works as both requisition's office and general store. Wow, I mean, are we? I guess we have a, a reputation based currency as we learned. Beyond it are car carnivorous warehouses stacked. Uh, carnivorous? <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry about that, guys. Um, cavernous warehouses stacked high with supplies from Earth, now being gradually unpacked and distributed. So there's a notice board? View the notice board. Colony food short. Uh, Shortfall, 100% low. Oh, so we're low on food? Colony security rating evaluating. Upcoming event, we'll be hosting our first annual Vermtunalia Festival during the second month of dust. Oh, I love how these months have such cool names. Notice, take precaution outside the colony boundaries. Xenofauna have been sighted in the area. Survey teams are investigating. And that's Chief Surveyor Tonin. Oh, there's more. Current Council and Administration, Governor uh, Edocott Command. Okay, 
So then there's like, is that our dad, Chief Cultivator Flulu Geophonics? I want to go see if that's our dad. Also, Chief Survey Surveyor Melatonin is Expeditions. Okay, we gotta go see what they're up to. Alright, let's go say hi to our dad. The greenhouses look so cool, dad! What the heck? Solceria, your dad gives you a big warm hug. I'm so happy you're finally awake. Dr. Instance thought it'd be best to help you to keep you asleep while your noggin healed. Your mother and I thought you might be sleepy, sleep away the whole year. My snoozy little gooseberry. I'm so happy with our dad. He checks your head and looks relieved. He was clearly very worried about you, but covers it with jokes and smiles. Aww. I love my dad. Welcome to Rutumnia, he says, uh, gesturing around you. You've never seen the solstratospic, solstratospheric from outside except in pictures. The ship has been separated in two and parts taken off to form other buildings and a big wall around the colony. The alien jungle creeps right up to the wall. Only the geodisc greenhouses pass outside it, dotting their way up the hill. Like, how did we all do this so fast? Like, it's also like beautiful, but so fast? You've been asleep for weeks, my dear Aberine. <laughs> I thought we were asleep for... Oh, yeah, two weeks, the little chair said. And these geodisc greenhouses practically put themselves up. But some of this is only a quick temporary solution, he admits. We'll keep growing and improving things. One day, our little colony will be as big as a whole city. Oh, oh and his name's Geranium? <gasps> okay, so he's not the leader of, like, geophonics, but come on, my dad's name is Geranium. That's awesome. Does he get to be one of my friends? What? Dad, you better not just suddenly die on me. Oh, before I forget, he pulls out a package from his satchel and hands it to you. You blink and stare at it blankly. Don't you know what day it is? He asked. You honestly don't. You remind him you've been asleep in Medbay. Happy birthday, he shouts, wrapping you in a warm hug. Your birthday already? You feel a dizzying sense of deja vu. You stare hard at the wrapped package. You know exactly what's in there. You remember it. No, you dreamed about this package some years ago on the ship. Inside will be a small medallion in the shape of a sun that your dad made by hand. I, I, I mean, I don't want to tell him we know what's inside and make him disappointed. But that's a little surreal. I mean, we could just open the package. He, I, I think he would misunderstand and think like we peeked. So let's just open the package. How, how did you know this? Is exactly as you imagined, as you dreamed. A feeling of panic rises in your throat, your hands shake, but for now, your dad notices. Are you okay, Solceria? He snaps his fingers. Dr. Instance shouldn't have let you out so early. Sometimes those sleeping meds take a while to wear off. They might make your head feel funny for a few hours. See, I think he would have thought it was just in our heads. Like, literally. You nod. Maybe? Maybe that's all it is. Someone shouts your dad's name. Listen, I'm so sorry, Solceria, he says, but I have to get back to work. There was an accident when we landed and... He stops himself. Don't worry, we're gonna fix it, your mother and I. Professor Hal is expecting you in classes. If you are filling up to it, your dad says, pointing west to the engineering wing, in the rear end of the bisected ship. Then he points to the large doors you came out of earlier. Or you can relax in our quarters until you're feeling better. We'll talk later tonight, he says, then kisses the top of your head and ruffles your hair. Have a wonderful birthday, Solceria. I love you. Okay, so now we can go study humanities and engineering. All right, we're going to say I love you too, Dad. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, so to enter buildings, click on the door or flag beside it, then get close and press enter or another action button. Then choose an activity for the month to gain skills in advance time. There are 13 months in a year and 10 years to the end of the game. You only have to focus on a few things. Oh man, like hanging out in the greenhouses? <gasps> Look, there's all sorts of cute little alien plants everywhere. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is going to be so fun. Hi, guys. I'll say hi to you in a second. Oh, an enemy, hi. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I, I honestly... Oh, hey, look. It's like a little area for the kids to play. That's so cool. I honestly think I'm going to be completely and utterly obsessed with this. Oh, this is exciting.
But all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on the start to this grand new intergalactic adventure. And if you'd like to join us on this and literally thousands more, ah, they won't let me out the front door, then do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, stay curious, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.